remember Lilia. This is part two. <laughs> and, yay, Lilia. Thank you. And what happened is when the cameras went off last time, we all had a discussion, and our executive producer, Jay Will, was saying this was a great conversation, yes. but I was waiting to hear more about the men in Lilia's lives, meaning her Absolutely. biological father and the father of the children. And so she shared this story with us, and we were like, definitely, Lilia, we need to bring you <laughs> right. back. Right, gotta get it on. And we actually even got comments from some of the men. Yeah. All of us did, and they a were just like, one glued to the glued to the TV watching it, yeah. but they had the same sentiments that Jay had. It's like, what about the men? Where yeah. was her father? Where are the right. fathers? Are they in their lives? So we're going to discuss all of that today. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess we can start with my dad. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my mom and dad were not actually, well, I guess they were in a relationship, but my father was married. So my mother was his mistress. You okay. could say. Um, but they very much so had a whole relationship. He was in the military, okay. so it was like I have my wife here, and then I'm stationed here, and that's where he met my mom, which okay. is in Corpus. Okay. So they developed oh, this Corpus. relationship, yeah, yeah. and um, they have me first. And while my mom is pregnant with me, my dad's wife is also pregnant. Oh, wow. So okay. um, at the same time, he has, like, both of these women pregnant. Okay. Um, he gives birth. I did not have a relationship with my father. Okay. Um, he was, from what I understand, very um, controlling. Like, it was very important for if he couldn't parent a certain way or if my mom wasn't going to give him things his way then he would just rather not be involved, be involved okay. period. Oh, yeah. um, but okay. it was important that our na his name be on our birth certificate okay. and that was more mm -hmm. I think um, the prideful thing um, from what I know he's a prideful man so and, yeah, and from when you were saying that his um, parenting style or desire is this something that you heard from your father or this is a recount from mom um so I've heard this from my mom but in okay. later conversations with my father as an adult that's also what I interpreted okay. as well as um, comments being made as I wasn't going to tolerate you know and I I'm not my mom was young like, yeah. I think that's important like okay. my dad's a little bit older he was okay. in the military, but my mom okay. was only 16, 17 when she had me. So oh, she wow. was a child okay. in this grown young. woman relationship. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. A domestic, domestically violent relationship as well. Okay. So there was abuse there. Okay. Um, and so he, I guess if he couldn't control my mother, mm -hmm. in a sense, then he wasn't going to um, be, involved. be involved. And with okay. my mother being young, sure. she was just maybe adding fuel to fire, not really okay. trying to, it was just like, we're gonna go back and forth. It was both a control thing on both of their parts. Okay. Now, did um, you have a relationship with your father at all? Do you know your father? Um, so at this stage, um, I have, when I became, I've always wanted to have a relationship with okay. my father. Okay. And so when I became older, I would do things like reach out to him. Mm -hmm. There was one instance, I have a brother, um, I also have a brother, we have the same dad. Okay. Um, and there was a point where when my mother was incarcerated for a period of time, my father came and he said he was going to take my brother, okay. but then he couldn't take me because okay. he didn't know how to raise a girl. And I think I was like 13 at that time. Okay. okay so um, I was like a teenager at that stage. Now he has four boys um, oh. on his own, and okay. then my brother, and then me. Well, I, I'm going first, and then my brother. So I'm his only girl. Ah, okay. um, so he let it be known, like, no, you need to stay with your grandmother. Okay. And my brother at that point was like, well, if my sister's not going, mm -hmm. I'm not going. Ah. So at that point, my dad was kind of like, okay, Okay, well then, buy the both of y'all. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's okay. fine. Um, and so as I got older, um, and I became a mother, yeah. I tried to reach out to my father. I would let him know, like I forgive him. Okay. I yeah. I understand that he's a man outside of being my father. Right, right. Yeah. I understand that maybe my mother wasn't the easiest person to parent with. These okay. are things that I said to him, yeah. and um, you know, he's re rebuttal was basically like when I'm ready. Um, we can maybe try to mend that relationship. Uh, and that is important. That is really important yeah. to understand that everyone's on their own journey. And right. I think what yes. happens is, especially as children, even when we're adult children, we still see our parents as on this pedestal, yes. their parents, and yeah. we forget that they are human as yeah. well, navigating and trying to find their way. Yeah. So I think that is good that dad did say, hey, I'm not ready. Right. Yeah. And, and as adults, because even though you're his daughter, yes. mm -hmm. you are still, you're having this very adult conversation. Right. Yeah. Right. And I love the fact that you said, you know, you showed your dad a level of compassion because right. like you just said, he is a human being. Yes. You know, we look at him as, right. oh my God, you know, we put our parents on this pedestal, mm -hmm. but we have to understand that they're only meeting us um, mm -hmm. at the point that they can right. reach us, right? Mm -hmm. So 
you know, for you to show him that compassion is very honorable. Right. Him. And that honestly took time because there was a lot of resentment because, like I said, he has mm -hmm. children of his own. Yeah, so it wasn't that he was incapable of being a father. Right. Right. Um, and I had to take away this idea that something was wrong with me. Oh, yeah, yeah, there was yeah, something yeah. that I could do to make him love me. Yeah. or something yeah. that I did to make him not be able to yeah. right. have that type of relationship with me. And yeah. once I actually got to that point to where I said, you know what? Outside of being my father, that's a man yeah, who yeah, has yeah. his own battle. Absolutely. His own demons, his own issues that he's dealing with, that's and right. I can't take it personal. Yeah, um, because once I, like I said, grew up and started learning my worth, I am, I am a good person, you and um, in, anyone who I feel that I'm in a relationship mm -hmm. with is going to benefit in some way. So yeah. I, I said to myself, you know, this isn't personal. Right. This is just yeah. something that he will have to deal with. And Absolutely. When the time is right, hopefully, you know, his he'll get. I, I'm never going to close that door. Right. One, I'm just like not that type of person, sure. yeah. but I'm never going to close the door and say I'll never be able to have a relationship with him. I just no longer allow my daddy issues, yeah. I guess, to be the okay. clutch yeah. um, right. that helps me to make those careless decisions Absolutely. that I was making. And, that, and that's a huge thing because yes. as we know, as we share, I also wasn't raised with my biological mm -hmm. father. Yeah. And and that is something you're right because at the childhood version of mm -hmm. us, we only look at the absence of a parent mm -hmm. as something's wrong with us. Because just even the development of a child, yeah. we don't know that there's all these different components that are at play. This is right. a real adult relationship. Yes. that has nothing to do with us but as children yeah. we take it just like you said because yeah. I have the same thoughts as well yeah. maybe if I were good enough if I were more of this less than that then yeah. my dad would be here mm -hmm. and then not realizing or recognizing through healing mm -hmm. that it's exactly as we talked about that dad is his own person yes. and then when he's ready if he's ready we'll have that but one thing that we know for certain yes. is that for us to be healed and whole, it is not tied to anyone else. Correct. That's right. This is something yes. that we can do through healing and things mm -hmm. like that. So yes. we're not stagnant. Like right. if someone else isn't ready, yeah. it doesn't mean that we're in a stronghold. So that's that's a beautiful yes. thing. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is I remember when you and Misha were here talking uh, after the camera stopped yeah. rolling. <laughs> 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 there was a lot of the conversation yeah. that came out. And I remember you saying, you know, you never expected loyalty from a man. Yeah. Right. And so I remember Chris Rock used to always say, a man is only as faithful as his options. Mm. Right? Mm. So the guy who has a lot of money and the cars and things yeah. like that has a lot of options, right? Because that's what most women are attracted mm -hmm. to. They're yeah. attracted yeah. to the money and the power uh, versus the guys who don't have a lot, right? <laughs> yeah. And probably don't have as many options. Sure. Right. And so for him, it was kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy because he actually, him and his wife of 20 years actually got a divorce in 2016. Okay. because of his infidelity okay. he admitted to having three affairs well three different affairs right okay. with three different women so we don't know how long these relationships were going on mm -hmm. and his rationale being you know he felt like he could get away with it right oh wow yeah okay. he felt like he could get away with it because he said i'm the celebrity breadwinner in the family right okay. <laughs> okay. so but you know what it's a narrative that we see playing right, out sure. right a lot especially yeah. in the society when you look at the rap music and a lot of what's being uh, perpetuated out here is, mm -hmm. you know, the side chick this, mm -hmm. the baby yeah. mama that, and the, yeah. the side piece and all yeah. these different things is that we're starting to glorify this, right. mm -hmm. this behavior. Yeah. And so I remember you saying, you know, just growing up, some of the things that your mother told you and things mm -hmm. like that, that right. it's almost like, well, I don't even expect loyalty from a man, right? Mm -hmm. So that's not something you were even looking no. for. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you came up with that conclusion. Mm -hmm. um, well, one, like I said, I, I knew from an early age that my father was made. Like that was, um, I grew up in one of those households where things weren't kept from the children. Oh, okay. So it was like you could really? walk in on it. It wasn't one of those... Um, do get out the room, folks. Oh, okay. Get out the room. We about okay. to talk. So it was a lot of conversations that we were exposed to. to um, so it was known very early that my dad had a you know wife. Okay. The domestic violence was talked about often. Wow. So these things I grew up already knowing. So that was my early idea of what a relationship was. Now, um, was this now when you said you grew up knowing this? Was this mom having direct conversation with you? Were you overhearing aunts talking with mom? Uh, or both. Okay. Both. Okay. Um, my mother 
is very open. Okay. She didn't shelter us from conversation. She didn't hide things from us. Okay. She was very open about her life, her struggles. Wow. Um, and I think that was actually a benefit. And, um, sure. you know, I think once I got older, it was a benefit because I could refer back to those right. conversations. Sure. I, I would imagine that. Um, but as a child, hard. it was a lot. Like, yeah. it was just like, okay. Yeah. Um, and I always felt like I was maybe more mature than other kids only because I was being exposed to sure, things absolutely. a lot. Sure. Yeah, because I never heard those type of conversations. Oh, yeah. So they yeah. were like, that was regular, you know. Um, so when my, when growing up hearing that, you know, I'm just like, okay, so this is a married man. And then, you know, and then okay. you would see things on TV or maybe an uncle was cheating on my aunt. And, yeah. Um, right. My mom also would tell us, me and my sister, all men cheat. Okay. Just some men are mm -hmm. more respectful about it, okay. so they don't get caught. Okay, so this was um, the narrative, mom. Yeah, yeah, this was just setting it off. Setting it off exactly. All don't put your cheat. expectations too high. Correct. Right. Okay. Basically, all men okay. cheat. Yeah. You ain't gonna find a man that don't cheat. So if he's a good man, um, then Hold you can overlook the cheating oh, kind wow. of thing. You know. Now, did okay. mom did mom operationally define for you what a good man was? Because of course that's that's very subjective, right? Because right. and you know yeah. everyone has a different opinion about mm -hmm. what could be good, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, not in the type of men that she dated. Okay. When we saw her date, I definitely um knew as like a child those were not good men. Right. Um, I I mean that's just to me it was she didn't date men that you were like oh that's that could potentially be okay. father material. You know it wasn't. Okay. I never felt that kind of connection yeah. with these men. So I don't believe she did but over okay. um what i can say that i was blessed to have is i had friends along like okay. that yeah. were like my safe haven their home yeah. so i i did see maybe a two-parent home here oh, wow. with my best friend and her mom okay. and dad and okay. i had okay. um my other best friend's mom who was extremely like supportive okay. and loving and would teach yeah. me things like co kind of correct some wrongs that i was okay. doing okay. um in a, a nice village way. yes nice. Correct. Yeah. Right. um and that's why now as a parent um i'm that hangout house okay. and it's only because okay. i truly understand the importance of it takes a village yeah, because if it were if it was just my mom's responsibility if no one else sure. played a role in right. my raising i would not have the chance that i have now yeah. i could be in a way worse situation Absolutely. so taking the time to like love on someone else's child and nurture sure. someone else's child is so important especially Absolutely. in today's yeah. world where everyone's kind of like mm -hmm. that ain't my problem yeah. i got yeah. my own responsibility exactly. yeah. i got all these kids like i'm a single mother of four children yes. and um like i was telling you yesterday yeah. there were eight additional kids at my house mm -hmm. okay. and um it can get stressful i'm not gonna lie but when i look at it it's one it's an opportunity for me to stay connected with my Absolutely. kids Absolutely. That's, that's how i stay yes. in stay in, 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 <laughs> stay in the inner circle of trust yes. and in the inner circle of yes. trust because I'm in the midst. I know what's yeah, going yeah. on. Um, and so I didn't necessarily, if it wasn't for those women in my life, mm -hmm. yeah. then um, I wouldn't probably have the idea of what a good man was. Right. The only issue was I felt like a good man wasn't for me. Like wow. I knew they existed. Okay. Right. For them, for my friends, sure. you know. Now, why but, did you feel like a good man was not for you? How did you come to that conclusion? Um, because when I would look at their lives okay. and I would compare them to my life, mm -hmm. my life, um, I just felt like the, the two didn't match. Okay. The type of, okay. um, you know, even growing up, I could see the difference in where my friends are now okay. and where I'm at. Like, they are both married now. Okay. They, um, you know, both have, you know, picked their careers and doing things. Okay. And as for me, I kind of just floundered through this thing and yeah. figured it out as I went along. Okay. And, then, and do you contribute a lot of that to their upbringing, their household, their parents? Yes. Okay. I contributed to okay. the expectations that were set. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I kind of grew up with no kind of restrictions. I kind of was able to do as I wanted. Okay. Um, and that's, yeah. I, and I know that now that kids actually respect that structure. They, they respect. They do. Yeah, they, they, do. they respect <laughs> and they need that they structure. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they find safety. Yes. Absolutely. That's very much so. Yeah. Very much so, um, and so I necessarily, when it came to myself parenting, yeah. those were things that I remember learning from other my friends' parents. Yeah. 
So yeah. that's a lot of, you know, ways that I was able to say, okay, that's a good man because yeah. I see my friend's dad right. doing these things and taking care of their right. homes. And I could say, okay, that looks great. But mm -hmm. it wasn't until now that I could say, hey, I deserve that too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And one of the things yeah. is, so you spoke about the relationship you have with your father. Right. Mm -hmm. And you spoke about some messaging you received from mom. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you said mom had multiple children by multiple mm -hmm. men. Yes. Now, what did you observe with mom's relationship with the father? fathers of the children mm -hmm. and those fathers relationship with you guys so we know that dad wasn't mm -hmm. in your life we right. were your brother and but the other fathers what role did they play if any in her relationship with them yeah. so the my sister I have a sister who's two years older than me mm -hmm. um, her father was not there okay. either okay. so there was no like relationship there that, okay. I, that I would be aware of mm -hmm. um, my youngest brother now he actually has a great father um, so I was able to see and, and it wasn't um, I, I guess my mom just got lucky because <laughs> they were never in a relationship. Okay. Um, and my mom was actually not supposed to have children anymore. She had had like her tooth side and everything. Really? So my wow. brother was this miracle baby. Wow. Um, and that man, his father was an amazing father. Like mm -hmm. I said, there, whenever my mother would go through a low point in life, um, he would come swoop in and get yeah. my little brother. And there was resentment there when we were kids. Yeah, because so I want to know how that made you feel. Yeah. To, you know, your father being an absentee right. father, mm -hmm. but you having this younger brother who sure. has an amazing father. Right. Now, yeah. did he embrace you guys as well? Or was it just like, um, okay, this is my son? Yeah. Um, He embraced us. Like, if he would come to get my little brother, okay. he would definitely, like, speak to us. And we had, like, growing up, you know, because my brother's five years younger than me. So okay. Okay. we were older kids when okay. he was coming around. And we had, like, you know, the little cordial relationship but not like he right. wasn't a father figure yeah. for us type of thing and then plus because you were saying he and your mother weren't together correct so, yeah correct yeah. so um mm. seeing that though as well now that i'm older i'm able to look back on these situations and i think that's important okay i'm really able to look important. back yeah. at these situations and it's easy to say i didn't have an example yeah. i didn't see anything right. growing up exactly. um but when i stopped playing victim to yeah, my childhood yeah. and I looked around and I said I did have examples yeah. whether it was my friend's mom sure. whether it yes. was whether it was my brother's dad I yeah. had these examples of a different way to do things yeah mm -hmm. um I just chose to just kind of let my environment consume me and I allowed myself to make choices out of this um What's the best word? Like being a product of your exactly. life, so to speak. Exactly. It okay. just was easier instead. It was because it's really hard. It's you know yeah. honestly, it's really hard to do the work to kind of not repeat cycles. Yeah. So it's a lot easier to just kind of go with the pattern. Yeah. Um. And so when I had my own children, um, at the beginning, mm -hmm. it was the pattern. Yeah. I've been through the whole. Right crazy baby mama okay. <laughs> i've been through the fighting i've yeah. been through the okay. fighting with your new girlfriend oh i've been through the you can't see your baby and see this is good right because yeah. we know that there's some individuals some men who may be dealing with this right now right like the baby mama or that type of thing so mm -hmm. now with hindsight being 2020 and you're being and you're at this space now of growth and healing yes <laughs> what were the catalysts for you to transform from I'm fighting the girlfriend. I'm, I'm fighting, you know. Or I'm fighting you. Right. You can't see the kids. None of that. So, were you? When did you identify what the real root of that behavior that you were projecting onto the men yeah. mm -hmm. and the women, the new women? Mm -hmm. When did you find out what the true source of that was? Um, I'll say when I. And had what was the true source that you discovered? So my son, my youngest son, is five. Okay. So I think once I got pregnant with him, um, his dad is very respectful, so he wasn't one. But my oldest two, we would go, we had uh, the whole chaos going on. Okay. And what I realized is I, it wasn't that something happened, it was the type of life that I decided I wanted. It, right. was, hey. it was, I had to, my expectations were unrealistic okay. to my situation. Okay. So, Explain that to us. Yeah, I mean, break that down. So for me, it was... I had an idea of what type of father these men should be. Okay. Okay. I had an idea of what they should be doing instead of looking at who they were as individuals. Okay. Because mm. once you become a mom, it's very easy to forget that you and your child's father were at one point, yes. two and the same. Yes. One yes. point you were people who used to hang out with each other, yeah, kick yeah. it. You did enough to make a baby come, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay? yeah. So it's very easy once you step out of that role as girlfriend yeah. or mm -hmm. side piece or whatever role you're playing, just right. being honest. Being honest. Once you yeah. step out of that role and now you're this this mother. Yeah. 
you stop looking at that man as who he is, mm -hmm. as which is a man. Yeah. And you start having this expectation of the type of father that he could be. Okay. And like I said last time, for yes. us as women, when we become pregnant, we yeah. are a mom. Right, yeah. Right? From and inception. a lot of us, if you're in a situation where you're having to kind of have these arguments, okay. that man probably was never for you in the first place. Mm -hmm. So you're already in a situation with someone where these, this child was not planned. Okay. Right? And um, he wasn't thinking about having no baby by you. Mm -hmm. Right. He didn't want to be nobody's daddy, yeah. period. Okay. And he's not he's not financially providing for himself a lot of the time. Right, so it's He's be. not showing, he never showed you anything to make you believe that he could be a responsible father. Mm, right. So all of a sudden you have this baby and you have this expectation of him. Yeah. And he's not meeting it. Yeah. And on top of that, I'm throwing things to prevent you from doing that out of my own anger. Yeah. Right? Because wow. I have this baby and now my life stops. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you still doing everything you was doing. So little resentment. A, a lot yeah. of resentment. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of resentment yeah. because now my life is on hold. Mm -hmm. And you try. Now I understand that if you do not control that emotion, yeah. that resentment, it, it will overparent. Oh, it yeah. will power you. And you're no longer parenting yeah. as you're co-parenting as a mother. Yes. You're mm -hmm. co-parenting from pain and hurt and, and anger and resentment. From there. And you cannot. Yeah. And it's amazing how you said, you know, um, we have these expectations, right? Mm -hmm. And my dad used to always tell me, what you see is what you get. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we get into these relationships and we see the glaring red flags. Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we pass, go collect $200. Yes. And we just All keep that. it pushing, yeah. right? We yeah. forget that, like, what the type of behavior you see ex exhibiting now is yeah. probably what you're going to get later, yes. right? Very true. And, and that is very true. But I yeah. think also it's important for us to, that we have to understand the role that we play in our lives Correct. Yes. and the decisions that we make as well. Yeah, Correct. Correct. You know, that we have to take that ownership. Mm -hmm. Correct. Did. And that's how I felt when I said, okay, I laid up with these men. Yeah. And it was really when I had my next son and I said, I don't, I don't want this life. And I saw it was um, the little Jada Pinkett. Okay. quote where mm -hmm. she talks about the family um, okay. her and Will Smith and his wife and their oh, kids yeah. and it was an idea that like I want this for my children ah, okay. I want this for my children okay. I don't know how we're gonna get it yes so I honestly started reading books on okay. co-parenting okay. um, I started okay. watching like we're looking up YouTube co-parenting um, oh, and I, I said I'm gonna try something different so okay. I feel like I'm very smart like the yeah. information be here mm -hmm. it's just sometimes when it comes to decision making I sure. just don't always make the best right. decision. Sure. So if I sit still long enough and you pray about it, God yeah. is going to talk to you. That's Absolutely. how I, you know. So when I started sitting still, I would get little comments in my head like, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Yeah. And as a mom, mm. the only difference between us and our baby fathers, just being honest, is nobody has a front row seat to our mess up. Yeah. Meaning, yeah. when I'm yelling at the kids, mm -hmm. he don't see that. Right. When I'm forgetting to yeah. fill out permission slips, he don't see that. Yeah. When I told my son we were going to the park yeah. and I didn't feel like getting up, mm -hmm. he doesn't see that. He yeah. doesn't see the disappointment I caused. He doesn't see sure. yeah. the, the, the same thing that he's struggling with, yeah. I'm struggling with, but yeah. he doesn't see it because Good he's point. not here. Yeah. So yeah. when I stop saying, hey, I can't be on him about things that I myself yeah. Am struggling with. I gotta show this man grace. Yeah. I mean, honestly, because it's so easy to be like, you didn't call him. Right. And honestly, yeah. A two-year-old is not thinking about his daddy calling him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just being honest. No, that's yeah. not. It's for, it's for yeah. us. Exactly. It's to feel like you need to be in the trenches with me. Yeah. Which is true. Mm -hmm. A man should definitely want to be there. Absolutely. But you got to pick your battles. Is that yeah. really something we want to fight about? That's true. Is yeah. that you did? Because my I, when I literally stopped to thinking about it, oftentimes, too, what I realized is whenever you're forcing a child on a man, yeah. you're mm -hmm. only setting your child up for rejection. Yeah. Oh. You are basically putting your child on a pl platter yeah. to be rejected. Wow. So, okay, I'm not going to force you mm -hmm. to be a father anymore, but I'm going to invite you into this space. That's and that right. is huge because you went earlier, sorry, you were saying that when you, as an adult, having the conversation with your father and your yes. father said he was not ready. Right. right. And as an adult, you're like, okay, I know when he's, when he's ready, we'll cultivate that relationship. Right. And so for you to have that lesson as well, I'm not going to force the baby right. 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 but I'm going to create an environment Correct. that's nurturing and welcoming that when and if you're ready right. yeah. it's, it's not toxic it's a safe calm Correct. space exactly. that, that you and the babe can cultivate a relationship Correct. together yeah. and speaking about that rejection mm -hmm. I remember you mentioning that being rejected as a kid mm -hmm. is very different from right. being, re being rejected as an adult. Correct. Right? Correct. So tell us a little bit about that, because I remember you know your father wasn't a part of your life. You've only met him once. Mm -hmm. Once is that correct? correct? And just feeling that reject 
rejection as an adult. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, honestly, the rejection as an adult came when I was already kind of on this healing process. Okay. So I was okay. able to say, hey, I understand it's not it's not me but yeah. um, when I was like seven 18 19 okay. and I'm trying to reach out to him again yeah. and mm -hmm. he's like rejecting me it's 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 almost like as a child yeah. you can say oh he doesn't want me mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. eh, I got my mommy sure. hey, yeah. I have all these things going on but as an adult you're just yeah. like wait so yeah. what's your reasoning now yeah mm -hmm. before exactly. it was maybe my mom was the problem sure. before it was maybe you had so much going on but yeah. what's the problem now because right, I'm an adult what? Um, the, yeah. exactly yeah. so in that instance it was more that came with more anger mm -hmm. that really? rejection made me more mad than as an adult as okay. an adult yeah. um and then as I got older and I started this healing and I reach yeah. back again out to him again to let him know hey I forgive mm -hmm. you yeah you know all is well yeah. um I hope that we can build one and he says he's not ready it yeah. was more like hmm disappointing but sure. I can understand that right and, and you know what and it's interesting because it's a little different for me as well yeah. so with me not being raised with my biological mm -hmm. father us leaving Boston around three yeah I didn't grow up with him and right. so for the longest time I didn't even feel any rejection or anything because yeah. I was just like hey can't miss what you don't know right. you know <laughs> and so it wasn't until maybe and and same thing like you there are three different times I reached out to my mm -hmm. father right um, I think we we're around high school in my 20s and my 30s mm -hmm. okay. and it wasn't until my 30s having a conversation with my aunt mm -hmm. and it wasn't until then that I realized that there was actually that pain because the whole time I was like do 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 don't know him yeah that thing. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until I was on the phone with my aunt, who I haven't met, but I will meet this August at the Yay! family reunion. And right. that, yeah, I'm super excited. <laughs> and, um, but the beautiful thing about that is when I was on the phone with her, mm -hmm. and I'm just chatting, chatting, and then came the rant. Yeah. Right? Which I did not even know was there. Right. And it was aunt you know when you, every year that y'all were sitting around the table holding hands giving thanks for everything y'all had yeah. nobody thought yeah. about me right. nobody yeah. thought where i was yes. when y'all had when y'all had christmas and mm -hmm. i have a sister whose name rhymes with my name misha and keisha right. and i was like and so when he had the second daughter misha keisha that rhymes with misha <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no one thought was like where i was <laughs> right. like, you know as you're yeah. having gifts and, and and all of this for right. 30 plus years yeah nobody thought i wonder if me just having gifts yeah no one and and when i tell you my aunt held space for me mm -hmm. and she was the whole signing gallery yep yep you have every right that's to be right. upset yes, yes. like yes. she validated and you need that and you, you need that, that. that. You, you know because she wasn't like oh you turned out well that yes. was x amount of exactly. time look at your life now suck it up what are you complaining she right. gave me space and that's right. grace yes. that you're talking about yeah. Yes. yeah because that's important and and that once i gave my father that grace mm -hmm. it honestly helped me to give my children's father's grace yeah, yeah. and i said okay i can that's i can right. do one thing i can bash y'all because it's a lot of things I can say wrong. Sure, right. Or I can take accountability that you guys are who I decided to lay up with. Sure. Yeah. You guys are who I decided to have these children by. Right. So I'm going to help you be a father. Absolutely. I know these. I know what to do. Yeah. I know what to do, right? Because yeah. and it's easy for me to be like, you don't know how to put a car seat in. You don't know how to make a doctor's appointment. You don't know how to do that. I don't know how to put a car seat in. <laughs> Once I started self-reflecting and self-evaluating, I said, dang, you just as messed up. Because remember, y'all were two peas in a pot at one time. Right. Okay? And if I said, you know what? If I could drive across town mm -hmm. to lay up with you, then I know I can meet you halfway to pick, give you your son. That's beautiful. We, we yeah. start doing things like that. We'd be like, I'm not going to meet him. But when y'all was dating, yeah. y'all was you would meet him anywhere. Oh, okay. now you don't want to listen to what he has to say. But yeah. when y'all was together, you hung on his every word. Oh. You know? You knew his needs. <laughs> You knew his needs. <laughs> you loved that man, okay? Yes. You loved him, but yes. now that he is your child's father, you sure. can't give him that same thing. But right. it's not just that he's the father. He's yeah. the father and not in relationship with you. Exactly. Yeah. That is the catalyst. Yes. That, is the, that is the big thing. Because if y'all yeah. were in a relationship, none of this would be. Right. 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 right, right, right. And once once I said, and then they would move on. 
and they have these new women, and I, I'm like, it's y'all fault, the women's fault. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. if, why would you be laid up with a man who's not doing what he's supposed to do? Mm -hmm. and then, the same reason why you laid up with him. <laughs> <laughs> it's what my soul will come at the same reason why okay. you did. Absolutely. Okay. And once I started remembering that, I said, okay, you know what? When we were together, you were funny. Yeah. You you could be yeah. kind. You yeah. could be caring. Yeah. You could. So let me speak to that part of you. That's right. Because I know this part that I'm speaking to you now, and I realize this is another thing. That's beautiful. This little piece of advice I want to give people. Please give it. If right. you are in a situation where you and your child's father are disrespectful to each other, yeah. we used to call each other MFs, B words. Wow. I'm talking all that. Well, yeah. You are verbally yeah. disrespectful, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what I noticed is that I was, as I was evolving in life, yeah. this little one area where my baby daddy's was still the area area where I was the same person, right? Mm. And it would be because if wow. you call me a, a, a B word, yeah. then I'm gonna give it back to you, okay? And we gonna go back and forth, and what I, no matter how much I told them that you're not gonna talk to me this mm -hmm. way, sure. I still engaged in it, yeah. yeah. What you're I was using the same language. Yeah, yeah. I'm using the same language. Yeah. Yeah. What I had to do is I had to realize if you don't want that to happen, you can't engage in that type of That's communication right. anymore. Yeah. Communication is one of the biggest tools that you guys are going to have to use Absolutely. to co-parent. And yeah. that requires respect. Right. Yeah. So if you feel that you're being disrespected, cut the conversation short. Hey, Absolutely. I'm not going to tolerate you speaking yeah. to me like that. Yes. Hang up the phone. Mm -hmm. That's right. If they're going to call you back and cuss you out again. Yeah. Hang it up again. Mm -hmm. Over time, these men realize, okay, you're not even going to engage in that type yeah, of conversation. That's right. And now we don't have that issue. But as long as I go back and forth right. with you, then that's how we rock. That's how we talk. And, and that's the thing yeah. is teaching people how to treat you. That's right. right. And, and as you're saying that you were growing. Because at first, this is, we were yes. engaged in the same behavior. So right. he doesn't know it's new. That's you know right. what I'm talking about? You just cut me out yesterday. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, now you knew? Yeah. But like you said, it took some time for you being consistent that's right. Right. with your new communication. That's style correct. for them to say, oh, okay, it is different. Correct. correct. And now let me listen. It makes me think about, so I just got through reading Devon Franklin's book. Oh, my God. Oh, the okay. Truth About Men. I'm halfway through it. Listen, it's a good book. Thank you, Devon. <laughs> it is a, it's such a wonderful book. And one of the things that he talks about is the dog versus the master, correct. right? Mm -hmm. So every man has the dog and everybody mm -hmm. and every man has the master. Mm -hmm. So the, the dog is the one who caters to the lower self, correct. right? Mm -hmm. Like how you talk about Misha, yeah. you know, sex food, water, yeah. that type, you know. The Maslow very, hierarchy. Maslow level. hierarchy. Exactly. Yeah. The very base level. And so many people um, don't ascend to what is the master mm -hmm. level, which is the self-actualization, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. so we have to train ourselves, right, mm -hmm. through discipline. And Correct. like I said, you have to train a person yeah. how to treat you. Correct. Yes. And so that's one of the things that he really talks about is that for men, because of course a lot of men have, and women too, sure, <laughs> have a lot of, <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I know, you know, have a, have a tough time, you know, controlling their sexual desires and yes. things like that. Mm -hmm. But it's not one of those things that happens overnight. Correct. Not and ever. so you have to be very gentle with yourself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and so like with you, you have to be very gentle with these men and understanding that, hey, this is the, this is, this is is how he's been operating for yeah. a very long time. time. If you're talking to somebody who's 30 and he's been operating like this since he was 20, you know, yeah. for the last 27 years of his life, right. then it's probably not going to change overnight. Correct. But if you continue, you know, to show that grace and to show this person like, hey, listen, I'm not going to deal with that. Click. Click. Right. They'll eventually get the point, right? Yeah. And they'll they'll start to change their behavior. And one of the things I love that the Bible talks about is being, re, you know, uh, being renewed in your mind, right? right? Mm -hmm. Changing the way you think, having that transformation yes. of thinking. Um, and so as we change our minds about what we think, mm -hmm. our our language Correct. starts to change, and right? That's the same. And, and taking that Bible verse and bringing it to Wayne Dyer, yeah. one of the things that he said is once you change the way that you look at things, the things you look at change. Absolutely. Absolutely. So once you change the way that you looked at the men, the father Correct. of your children, right? They started to, and I started to treat them differently. Okay, Absolutely. hey, I know that you forget mm -hmm. to call your son. Yeah. Because I can't take for granted the fact that hey, I'm in here every day. I see him. He's sure. in, he, he's in my face. Yeah. yeah. But if you're if you're out of sight, out of mind, yeah. kind of thing. Okay, hey, I just want to see you text. Hey, you haven't called mm -hmm. him. Just give him a call. Yeah. Little things like that. Yeah. Right. Those help. No yeah. attitude. Anything. Exactly. Yeah. Those things help. Not trying to make them feel bad, but yeah. just hey, I want to let you know. Absolutely. This is how it works. Mm -hmm. You know, not expecting them to know how to be a father when exactly. I'm sending them for the weekend saying hey yeah. this is what he likes to eat mm. this is what he likes to do yeah. Yeah. these are things to help you mm. on this and if you need me call me we could you know if something happens Absolutely. engaging them mm -hmm. 
you know, a lot of times we don't want to release the control, yeah. but you want this man to have responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right. That's going to require a man to have control. You got to release the control, you gotta release the control yeah. if you want him to have some responsibility. Yeah. So as long as you have this idea that this is my baby, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm the boss, <laughs> I'm the primary <laughs> parent, you yeah. just here, yeah. Yeah. then that's what you're going to get. Exactly. Yeah. You know, that's what you're going to get. Yes. And make sure that you are doing the same things that you require of this man. Absolutely. Okay. And it goes back to that messaging because what you require of him to make sure you're looking at self and saying, am yes. I requiring of you know, that of myself? That of myself. Yes, yes. Absolutely. that is very true. And so that changed the whole trajectory of Ooh. our relationships with my children's fathers. Yes. And it changed the relationship with their children. Okay. Um, okay. My, there, are, there are certain qualities that each one of my children possess. Like we talked about last mm -hmm. episode, when you have multiple kids by different men, that's sure. different personalities, yeah. different yeah. DNAs, yeah. different trigger points, different Absolutely. histories, right? That's right. And so there are part, I can't, I don't know certain aspects of these men, sure. yeah. right? So when I'm seeing certain things in my child, right. I can't connect with that because I, that's not from me. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, if I'm just being honest, mm -hmm. but now that your father's here and your father's active, I can give him a call and be like, hey, yeah. he's yeah. doing this and he's acting this way. And yeah. when they say to me, oh man, I used to do that same thing as oh, a kid. Yeah, yeah. Man, this is what had to help me. Absolutely. And one yeah. another thing that I want to say, I'm sorry. No, we didn't. another thing. No, this is this is your show, Olivia. <laughs> we're, we're just here. We're, we're just co-hosts. This is really this a show. Yeah. This is really a show. Yeah. One of the other toxic traits that I would do is listen to outsiders tell me how to co-parent. Ah, um, yeah. you know, were these outsiders who one were co-parenting, had healthy co-parenting, had no. children. Right. Are you <laughs> some had moms? children, some had children, okay. some were single moms, but okay. they also was had okay. baby daddies that were not involved. Okay. And a lot of the time, like I said, I told you, I'm in a lot of single mother Facebook groups. Okay. And I get in these groups, um, and that's kind of how like I do my ministry. I get in there and I yeah. encourage these women, and I just you know try to give them a different perspective. But yeah. a lot of times, all the advice that is be being given is forget him. You don't need him. Oh, no. uh, they'll tell you, oh, you know what? If he didn't come pick him up at this time, then wow. you don't need to let the child go. Or put a restraining order on him. Oh, wow. Or ask the new girlfriend. And this oh, is wow. what's being, the when we're asking oh. for advice in these groups, mm. this is what being told. So, fellas, the advice that your baby mama is getting, a lot of times, is not in your benefit. Right. Just yeah. A lot of times, it's throwing fuel to the wow. fire. But you know, what, this, what this is saying is that the groups, and not all all individuals in the group, but it's showing that there's a lot of pain yeah, and yes, a lot right, of a unhealed lot. emotional wounds. Yes. And when you operate from that space, it skews, colors, mm -hmm. what yeah. you see, how you see Correct. people, how you behave. Correct. Oh, that's so and it doesn't awesome. let you oh. parent, and it doesn't let you yeah. allow this man to parent, because yeah. who who I am, and, I, and this was the biggest revelation that I had, okay. yeah. who I am, as a mother doesn't make me a good woman. A lot of times, I wanted to perfect being a mother, okay. and I ain't work on who I was as a woman. Ooh, right? right? So just That's because he like so, just because he's a uh, was maybe a sorry man to you, mm -hmm. does not mean that he cannot be a good father. They're two different roles. They're two different yes. roles. Very different. So you have to know, and, and you've never seen him be a father. Yes. So you can't judge him yet yes. on that. Yes. All you're doing is saying, well, you did me wrong, yes. so you obviously gonna do my kid yeah. wrong. And I'm, I'm glad you brought, brought that up, up because I want to say something, even as a single woman yeah. who desires to be married and does not have children yet, yeah. but we have to change this narrative mm -hmm. of, you know, just because you're a single mother, like, I don't need a man. Yeah. Yes. We you do. know, yes. forget him. I don't need I him. Know. I did, you know, I, I, <laughs> listen, it's, it's a very crippling narrative. Correct. It's a very debilitating Correct. narrative. It's a very toxic narrative. Correct. And I know a lot of people say, well, Cynthia, that's very easy for you to say mm -hmm. because you grew up in a two parent household. You're right. And I don't make I don't make any uh, excuses about it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not ashamed to say that. But I hear this narrative being perpetuated so much, mm -hmm. and it's not a good thing. No. If it took two of you to create this child, mm -hmm. why would you think it wouldn't take two of you to raise it? Sure. Now, there's a lot of single mothers out there who may be single by choice, right? Mm -hmm. um, or maybe by circumstance. It doesn't matter. But um, it's it's very selfish of right. you to. Uh, parent alone and, and, and exclude the man, right? right? Especially if this is a man who wants to be a part yes, of his child's mm -hmm. life. I see so many women who, because of their hurt and their pain uh, from the men that they chose to have babies with, right. that they're like, you know, they, they, they don't want the child to have a relationship mm -hmm. or they're, they're making it difficult Correct. for the man mm -hmm. to see their children. It's, it's unfair mm -hmm. and it's wrong. 
And what that does exactly. is, is it creates a cycle because yeah. if you are a mother yeah. of sons yeah. and you are telling that father, I don't need a man, I don't need you around here. Sure. You're uh, you're telling your child that yeah. once he becomes a man, he does. That's why these exactly. men are so able to leave. Exactly. No, so when you when he gets up and walks away from his yeah. child, then I, why yeah. are we surprised then? Correct. But then also what it does is it shows in the household as well. So one, usually what happens, or sometimes what happens with these women, is that they baby these men. Mm -hmm. they, it, it, or yeah. they treat them as if they are their man. Yes. You know? Oh, yes. Like, wait, y'all yes. like, yes. yes. let me get on the Oedipus complex. You know, so just this thing that you're the man of the house yes. and, and putting and all of not. this responsibility, <laughs> yes. this emotional yes. responsibility on the male child. Yes. And then what happens is, is like you said, it doesn't set him up to be an independent, critical thinking, Correct. full man mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and society and then when he partners with women and yes. then also what he's seen with his mom like yes. this type of behavior yes yeah does, does he date does he end up dating a woman like his mom mm -hmm. and feeling like if it's not this type of conflict going back and forth yes. it's not yes. love. yeah you know i'm glad you can brought that up misha because i remember i had a girlfriend who was getting married okay. and so one of the conflicts that she had in her relationship is that her you know newly husband it was always this he was a mama's boy right let's just make it plain he was a mama's boy and so she was always in conflict with his mother because his mother had this really uh sick Oedipus complex, right? Where she feels like this is her man. Mm -hmm. So now here's this new woman who comes into the picture, mm -hmm. and you're taking my man away from me mm -hmm. because he's mm -hmm. been the man of the household for X yeah. amount of years, yeah. right? And it's a very skewed reality, mm -hmm. and it's not good, ladies. Yeah. Like he is not your man. Yeah. Stop making your sons, if you're a single mother, mm -hmm. your son is not your man. Yeah. And your daughter is not your enemy. And your yeah. daughter is not your oh, enemy. Right. It's, oh, exactly. Yes. It, it, it cannot be that way, yeah. right? Because, like you said, you're putting under necessary responsibility re responsibility that was never his to take on Correct. anyway Correct. I, I you know I grew up in Sunnyside right mm -hmm. so I saw a lot of this going on because there were a lot of single mothers okay. there were mm -hmm. a lot of boys out there who were selling drugs and got into mm -hmm. you know things that they should have never and right because they were trying to take care of home they were trying mm -hmm. to take care of these single mothers and listen how if it turns out everybody's just doing the best that they can do sure. but it's not a great narrative because yeah, sure. trust me you know um Jay Will, the executive producer of the Green Sofa, can can tell you, yeah. you know, we saw a lot of people go down, right? Yeah. I saw a lot of young boys killed in my neighborhood because they were trying to pick up the mantles that their fathers dropped yeah. because they were trying to be the men of the household. Mm -hmm. And it's an honorable thing. You know, let's, it's yeah. a beautiful thing. Right. But at the end, it's, it's not don't a good thing. That don't do that to your child. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and so we want to make sure that... You know, men, we are inviting men into the conversation. Yeah, right, and yes. this is not a male bashing session because no. we are all about light and yeah, love, right? right? Yeah. And we want to encourage the men to be a part of their children's relationship. And we and I really appreciate you saying that, yeah. all the work, the work that you have done and how you have been a catalyst for these men yeah. to be better fathers. Even right. though it's probably not the best relationship with you and you know right. what I mean? Correct. Just because you guys aren't together anymore Correct. does not mean you cannot be great at co-parenting together. Misha, yeah. please. And then so before we close, we would like to, as we started, is what is the current relationship with you and the father of your children? Mm -hmm. And then what is their relationship with their children? Yeah. Um, so I have a good relationship with every single one of them wow. at this stage. Like I said, um, that is okay. Okay. <laughs> yes, because yes. it was a lot of work, but yeah. we communicate, um, we do things together with our yes. children. Yes. Um, we, you know, even they'll call me and say, hey, little man, I'm just struggling with this. Can you give me some advice? Wow. We, you know, we have built friendships outside of just parenting and That's we're also wonderful. able to parent. Um, I engage them in things that are going mm -hmm. on um i'm definitely more respectful to their women in their lives uh, yes, you know because i understand hey when i'm going y'all who's sure. seeing my children yeah, look, like, sure. you know um and and i've gotten through a lot with them yeah and we're doing this as like as a team and they have a great relationship with their sons um mm -hmm. and you know my daughter has a great relationship with her father um which is amazing yeah and so seeing them being able to do that at first mm -hmm. there was like that Hmm. <laughs> my daddy. But then you yeah. kind of you work yeah. through yeah. it, um, and to see it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like there's a lot of things that I can give my children, yeah. um, but that I feel like is the greatest gift that I can give them is yeah. being able to have both their mother and their father in their life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then with you, you were saying that you're co-parenting. Some of the men have uh, partners now. Correct. And so, did you guys have like a formal meeting to meet everyone and uh, yeah. and all of that? 
Um, we did. We, okay. It's very cordial, introduce, introducing, okay. and yeah. me understanding that we have two separate roles. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm the mom, you the yeah. girlfriend, two separate okay. entities. Yeah, you know, absolutely. That's, you know, that's important. Sure. Just realize that we have separate roles. You yeah. do your thing, I do my thing. Yeah. Respect is the main component. Yeah. Respect. Huge. Yes, absolutely. Huge. And I know we didn't touch on this, but I wanted to touch on it really quickly because I remember you saying last time that there was a little bit of jealousy between, you know, your daughter having mm, her yeah. father in her life yes. versus you not having that same relationship. Mm, yes. and I know we're wrapping up, but yeah. I just wanted you to <laughs> touch briefly yes. on that. Yes, um, when my daughter was first born, I remember being in the hospital and her father mm. holding her and um, I, I, I cried. Mm. And I felt this extreme weight of like, Man, like oh I've never God. experienced that. Wow. And there was a part of me, a small part that was jealous. And I think yeah. it's important that I allowed that allowed myself to feel yeah, that. that. Yes, and I, I dealt with it and I realized that it wasn't that I was jealous of my daughter. Sure. I was in jealous I was jealous of that relationship, right. that thing. Not particularly my daughter. Right. And that if you thing. don't get that in check, that's why I said earlier, your daughter is not your enemy. Yeah. That's why um, you know, you, you want I want her to have the things that I did not yeah. have. So it's a beautiful thing, but it just further showed me that there is still healing that I need so to do work. Absolutely. My yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that's the beauty yes. because it is life is a journey and especially the healing, as you said, it is because we're constantly evolving. Yes. It's not a plateau that we reach. No. We're constantly evolving always. to become better. And it's always important to be gentle with yes. ourselves. So yes. really, uh, this is part two. It's wonderful. Thank that you. Yes. Thank that, you. That, and this is, this is the victory and the redemption. So yes. anyone who is where you are, based on, you know, having children, not with the fathers, that it's not too late. You no, can right. change, you yes. can change that narrative. And even though it may not be that you and the father are partnered again, right. but what you can do is have a beautiful, healthy, respectful, yes. co-parenting relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. And like I said, the Bible talks about be transformed by the renewing of your mind. As your mind starts to change, your language will change too. And we know that life and death are in the power yes. of the tongue, right? Yes. And that loving will eat the fruit thereof. By your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. So make sure you're very mindful of the words that you're speaking, yes. not only over yourself, but over your children Correct. and the men in your lives, because mm -hmm. we are all about love and redemption yes. and light, guys. So we've had such a wonderful time with you, Thank you. You are the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank your you. story is so enlightening, Thank especially you. for a woman. It makes me have even more compassion yes. for women like you who didn't grow up with their fathers, right? Yes. Because there's a level of insight that I just don't have because right. I've never experienced that. Yes. So I want to also let the women out there like me know that we have to have more Correct. compassion mm -hmm. for women like this. So thank you, yeah. Lilia. I'm Seneca Dunmore yes. and yes. thank you for joining us on The Green yes. Sofa. I'm Seneca. Misha. Lilia. Yay! Yay.